on the edge of space, at the very borders of time and existence, through a sea of cosmic energy, a vortex of primal force, strides the Destroyer. The consumer of worlds, Galactus. He has no true form, this unfathomable creature. What we see of him is but the merest tip. He's an iceberg of cosmic proportions, and every living being perceives him differently, in accordance with their own culture, instincts, or superstition. Their minds project upon him an image they can comprehend, as they struggle to grasp at the inconceivable. Hello, I'm Tyler, this is the Imaginary Axis, and how do you think the world is going to end? Seriously. A poll conducted in 2012 suggested one in seven people on Earth think the world will end during their lifetime. Some of the most popular suggestions include nuclear war, climate change, some sort of worldwide revolution or religion-specific Armageddon, but today we're talking about the only global apocalypse that has a face to go with the name, Galactus. And if that name sounds familiar to you, you've probably seen him around. Galactus is one of the most well-known and widely feared entities in the entire Marvel Universe. Because when he arrives on the scene, it's not just a full day's work for one group of heroes or another. Galactus is a threat to everybody. And I do mean everybody. More powerful than the mysterious Celestials, more hostile than the Kree Empire, more terrifying than the Mad Titan Thanos, and even more ageless than the All-Seeing Watchers. Galactus is the subject of ghost stories that drift from planet to planet across billions of light years. Children hear his name whispered in their ears at night to keep them well behaved, and every galaxy on record has independent verification of genocides committed by his own two hands. Cause you see, for those of you who don't know any better, Galactus eats planets. Yeah, he'll occasionally make meals out of suns, moons, asteroids, or other things, but for the most part, this guy is on a 24-7 all-planet diet at the very top of the cosmic food chain, and you're sitting on the dinner table. Which tends to put people a little on edge. Of course, if you're a longtime comic book veteran, Planetary Jeopardy is basically a daily occurrence, so the title Consumer of Worlds probably just makes you wonder why the Avengers need more than one guy to take him down. Believe me, I was right there with you during my young, young days first seeing this bizarre cosmic glutton with questionable taste in headgear. But after years of studying exactly what Galactus is, how his powers function, and tracing it back through the eons of history, I think I have a pretty firm grasp on the truth that lies behind the biggest appetite in existence. And not to spoil anything, but this planet-sized hyper-predator has a lot more going on than even the gods are willing to admit. He may very well be the most important living thing in the entire Marvel Universe, and the most dangerous, which is exactly why somebody needs to kill him. Let's back up a little bit. If we're going to understand Galactus, then we have to start off by defining exactly what Galactus is. And I'm not necessarily talking about his species, because first of all, he's unique. There isn't a herd of Galacti roaming around. He has no relatives, no tribe, no gender, and arguably not even a proper physical form. But secondly, on a more fundamental level, Galactus represents a concept scientists and philosophers have been speculating on for decades. The Great Filter. Have you ever looked up in the sky at night and wondered why the universe seems so... empty? Because you should. That's definitely something you should wonder. Astronomers have run the numbers and it just doesn't make any sense. The Earth is 4.5 billion years old. The Milky Way is 13.6 billion years old. Over 20 billion stars in the galaxy have the same general properties as our Sun, and 20% of them have an Earth-like planet within the habitable region of their orbit. Which means, statistically speaking, life should have cropped up billions of times in our region of space before the Earth even existed. But as far as humanity can tell, nothing. This is called the Fermi Paradox. There was actually a study done in 2015 that searched for indications of artificial energy usage in over 100,000 nearby galaxies but it concluded that either sufficiently advanced alien races don't exist anywhere in our local universe, or if they do, they're really rare. Could they be hiding from us in ways we don't understand? Well, maybe. Or maybe there's something out there stopping societies from developing to that point. Maybe there's a cosmic filter wiping out any life foolish enough to get its attention. And maybe it's so powerful that our tools can't even identify it, because its actions are indistinguishable from the natural functions of reality. That's pretty much the role Galactus plays in the standard Marvel Universe. He's been around since space and time were still young, 10 billion years at an absolute minimum, and the Marvel Cosmos might look like it's teeming with life compared to ours, but it's not. 
if even a single basic spacefaring civilization evolved in the Milky Way between the beginning of the universe and now, estimates suggest they should have been able to colonize the entire galaxy within 5 million years. But clearly that hasn't happened yet, even in Marvel. In fact, it isn't even close to happening despite thousands of alien species existing. They're scattered, at least more than they should be. Empty planets all across the stars, some worlds completely unaware other life exists. And this is almost definitely the work of Galactus. His appetite is so massive that it has single-handedly shaped the entire landscape of the universe. That's why people are terrified of him. He's been eating planets for billions of years, and nobody in Marvel's never-ending tapestry of aliens, heroes, wizards, and robots has managed to stop him. That might be the longest win streak in history, and it isn't exactly against a lineup of lightweights either. Galactus treats gods like they're insects. So exactly how powerful is this guy anyway? He's gotta be pretty impressive to be the undisputed champion of the universe for that long, right? Well, yes, but research into the precise functioning of Galactus's biology is lacking, to say the least. A lot of people consider Galactus's true nature to be beyond human comprehension. I can't even get a proper read on what he really looks like, let alone the inner workings of that body. But when in doubt, my imaginary friends, always go back to the basics. If we know nothing else about the guy, we know Galactus runs on planets. That's what he eats to stay alive. Just like your body consumes Earth food to get the energy it needs for basic everyday maintenance, Galactus consumes planets to keep that complex anatomy of his up and running, along with all the associated superpowers. But he doesn't take his meals the same way you might enjoy a hamburger, for instance. Galactus consumes worlds by absorbing their life force directly, the energy within elements that allow a planet to grow. That's why the worlds he eats tend to have life on them. He can do it naturally, or he can use one of his specially made machines to ensure he gets every last drop out of it, but the most unique thing about Galactus's feeding process is actually what happens after he's converted a planet entirely into energy. His initial input is always significantly less than his resulting output, which is not normal. When anything else in the universe eats something, it gets less energy than the sum total of the food being consumed, because a certain amount of it's needed to do things like digest. This suggests that when Galactus feeds, it runs on some kind of unknown, highly advanced metabolic process that would absolutely freak physicists out because he seems to be using the energy of planets to create more energy. And as far as we know, that shouldn't be possible. But it does confirm something important about how he operates. Galactus's potential power output is directly related to how much energy he's consumed recently, meaning he's never really at any set strength. Exactly what we're dealing with may vary depending on when and what his last meal was. Which is why I've developed a tool I'm going to call the Munchometer. We're going to examine a variety of things Galactus has done in the past to really get a broad picture of his capabilities, and the Munchometer here will estimate his relative level of starvation or satisfaction at the time of whatever we're discussing. If all goes well, then this should provide us a range of power you can expect depending on Galactus's last meal. So, let's do it! At his absolute weakest, Galactus has occasionally had trouble fighting off small mobs of Earth heroes. Granted, these fights are usually close, and the heroes need a few heavy hitters on their team like Thor and the Hulk, but Galactus is starving to death in most of these, so I think it's fair to call this his bottom limit. He was also once stalemated by the superhero Sentry acting alone. Sentry's widely known to have the power of a million exploding suns, so that's not a bad place to start. During the Annihilation event, a supervillain managed to weaken Galactus and take him hostage, storing the energies he absorbed inside a ship as he literally starved to death. The plan was essentially to gather a little more energy and turn Galactus into a bomb that would destroy two different universes. But he broke free before anything could be accomplished, and using the power gathered from only a single planet, Galactus released an attack that obliterated three star systems and just kept going. He then immediately left to get some food. According to official files from the Nova Corps database, the powers that be consider Galactus a threat to the entire universe. Which should be obvious at this point, but it's hard to tell exactly how much further he goes without comparing him to characters who are the same. So this is Mephisto, a mysterious and dangerous demon who rules his own realm next to the mortal cosmos. He's threatened as many as three different universes as a mere side effect when fighting against an equal, but he's known to be a lot stronger when operating in his own hellish domain. Galactus fought him to a draw there once, immediately after being denied a meal. He then threatened to consume Mephisto's realm, which basically made the demon give up and let him leave. Odin, King of Asgard, is also a force to be reckoned with. His greatest battles have put all nine realms of Yggdrasil in jeopardy, and yes, it's been confirmed that those realms are full universes. He's fought Galactus twice, 
once under normal conditions and once when Doctor Doom had stolen Galactus's powers. Heck, there was even one time when Thor fought Galactus after becoming more powerful than Odin ever was. But in every single one of these cases, Galactus was clearly interrupted while looking for his next meal, and things still didn't go well for the gods. This is nothing if not consistent. Even Odin's longtime rival Zeus would have probably been killed by one of Galactus's laser beams if he wasn't possessed by an abstract shadow oblivion deity at the time. It's a long story. So what happens when he's barely hungry at all? One time, during a fight against two other equally powerful entities, Galactus posed a threat to the entire multiverse. And they were going all out, too. Oblivion was certain that this battle would mean the end of everything. And that fits right in with estimates from people like Reed Richards, who's gone on record comparing Galactus to the Phoenix, an abstract entity responsible for all psychic energy in the multiverse. She can counter magic that throws infinite realities into disarray, contain energy bursts that threaten all of existence, and straight up stop the multiverse from collapsing on itself. But even she's only beaten Galactus in a fight once, when he was starving. Galactus got her back later when he was more full. Doctor Strange faces multiversal threats all the time under his own power, but even he doesn't consider Galactus a winnable fight when he's ready and healthy. In fact, Galactus has fought one of the three gods Doctor Strange gets his powers from, and the shockwaves alone tossed other far-off dimensions into chaos. Doctor Doom thinks Galactus's power is endless enough to conquer the multiverse. He considers Galactus's power and the Phoenix's power to be beyond even the cosmic cubes, which have threatened the entire multiverse repeatedly. And you know what? He's right, too. A sentient cosmic cube named Cubic once warned another cosmic cube that the Celestials were ridiculously more powerful than either of them, despite both of them having infinite power capable of affecting infinite universes. And Galactus still fought several of them simultaneously, even killing one. If this is starting to sound absurd to you, then you're probably not alone. Galactus's power range is enormous. For a planet eater, it can get to some ridiculously low levels before he straight up starves to death, but it can also just increase seemingly forever, without any ending in sight. There have actually been two separate occasions when somebody messed with Galactus's head and made him so hungry that he threatened to devour the entire multiverse. It's a lot to take in, trust me, I get it. He's also ridiculously faster than light, which shouldn't be a thing, and has been seen replicating practically every superpower that exists. If I were to list off examples of everything Galactus has ever done, we'd be here a while. But by now you're probably noticing a trend. Each time we try to examine what Galactus is capable of, we come up with answers that don't make a lot of sense. It's almost as though the laws of nature we're familiar with just don't apply to him. And you'd be right about that. Notice how reality literally bends and warps around his very presence. Time does that too. From a mortal's perspective, even approaching Galactus when he's giving off this much energy can seem like an acid trip. And if by some miracle you were able to actually beat him in a fight, he can recreate himself from total annihilation. Is it any wonder that some species have just given up and don't even bother calling for help when Galactus enters their star system? He's the living embodiment of a no-win situation. He doesn't follow physics. How do you even assess something that far beyond us? In 1964, Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev proposed a method for measuring the advancement of alien species based on how much energy they're capable of using at once. Of the three types he defined, a Type 1 civilization would use the total energy of an entire planet, a Type 2 civilization would use the energy of a star system, and Type 3, a full galaxy. Galactus would theoretically classify as a Type 5 species by himself. But Kardashev never even proposed anything that extreme. And some have suggested this is because anything that powerful would have so much influence over our reality that it would basically be impossible to detect. In other words, Galactus is exempt from the rules because he helps write them. Or at least, some of them. His abilities are the result of what he calls the Power Cosmic. And if you want to beat him in a fight, you have to get that powerful yourself. You need to write your own laws. Even Galactus wasn't always a giant, hungry energy monster. A long time ago, he was just a random guy too. The last random guy. A scientist named Galen. Sole survivor of a multiverse that was collapsing. But he refused to sit down and let his reality die. He piloted his ship into the heart of the cosmic storm that was tearing apart everything, and emerged into the new multiverse as the entity we know today. You know, that's not a bad analogy for the situation humanity is faced with. Our universe is dying. It's happening slowly, but anytime anyone does anything, a little bit of energy is lost. It's the law. The second law of thermodynamics. When you rub your hands together, a little bit of heat comes off that for all practical purposes just 
isn't usable anymore. And eventually, given enough time, all the energy in the universe will do the same. It will spread out evenly into a state of homogeneity, where there's an equal amount of it everywhere. Like the cream and sugar spreading out in a coffee cup, one day all stars will burn out, all black holes will disintegrate, protons will decay, electrons will stop moving, the universe will freeze, and nothing will ever happen again. Heat death. If only we knew someone who could make more energy. Maybe looking at Galactus as a villain to beat isn't the right way to approach him in the first place. After all, it's not like he tears down planets for fun or kills people because he enjoys it. Life just happens to exist on his only food source. It's not like we're unfamiliar with that problem, and his presence in the universe has its benefits too. Without destruction, there's no room for new things to develop. He prevents any one civilization from growing too powerful and colonizing the universe. Galactus even acts as a cosmic antibody of sorts. When something threatens reality, he's right there on the front lines. Heck, he has a weapon that can erase multiversal threats from existence at all points in time simultaneously. And Eternity liked him so much that he placed a Galactus in each reality to fend off certain enemies. But if we're not going to call him a villain, maybe challenge is the more appropriate word. He's the story of a guy who stared down the ultimate no-win situation, and asks us to do the same. If we can't, he'll be there at the end of time to recreate the multiverse for us. The last living legacy. The literal remnants of everyone and everything you ever knew, loved, spoke to, thought about, or heard of, fashioned into brand new energy for the brand new cosmos. But if we can meet his challenge, if humanity can expand, explore, evolve, and one day face Galactus himself, then maybe we'll also have found a way to conquer the laws of the universe and keep on living. Hey there! Hungry for more content? Then why don't you join us next week on Friday the 26th at 6pm Eastern for a live stream covering any unresolved questions. We'll be talking about Galactus and Darkseid because I've been getting a lot of questions about both lately. You really should show up, but if you can't, that's fine. You can stay updated by clicking the subscribe button instead, or following me over on Twitter, links in the description. But even if neither of those things are quite your style, thanks for sticking around to the end. More content coming soon, and until then, have a fantastic day.